<clears throat> My name is Blake Ballard, and I'm a 39-year retiree from the Forest Service, 23 years on the Palouse Ranger District. The Palouse Ranger District is your nearest national forest. It's the nearest national forest ranger district to 100,000 people in Lake Tahoe and surrounding counties. Of this land that would be exchanged for the Upper Lock Saw, there would be from 8,000 to 11,000 or 12,000 acres from the Palouse Ranger District that would, that would go into this exchange. There are many of us, particularly Forest Service retirees, Palouse Ranger District retirees, as well as others who are concerned that this exchange would be precedent setting in that it, it exchanges land or it gets, it disposes of land does not acquire, does not acquire any. 8 to 12,000 acres and that would lead to further exchanges. There's a very similar parcel of land up in the Upper St. Joe. It looks just like the Upper Locksaw, checkerboard ownership. And somebody's just waiting in the wings to see what happens with the Upper Locksaw exchange. And then if it goes through, then they're gonna jump on it for another exchange, another eight to 12,000 acres from the Palouse Ranger District. The Palouse Ranger District is one of the smallest ranger districts in the, certainly in, in region one, the northern region, that's, uh, Northern Idaho and, and uh, most of Montana. <clears throat> you take eight to twelve thousand acres now, and another eight to twelve thousand acres, and then, and, and these parcels are arbitrary. You know, you look at you look at what's been selected to be exchanged, and look at the rest of the district. There's no difference. They're all quote <laughs> scattered parcels. There, there's no difference. So there's no reason that it's not as though. Uh, we're done now, we're at the bottom line, we've exchanged all the, quote, problem areas, and I'm going to address the problem areas, uh, the, the uh, notion that there are problem areas. Uh, but there would be more exchanges, and someone, when we've got a budget crunch and screaming for efficiency, that says, the Pooch Ranger District isn't dribbled down to nothing, let's just get rid of it. Now, uh, two four supervisors have denied that this would happen. Uh, the current uh, four supervisor, Rick Brazell, and his predecessor, Tom Riley, said, oh, no, we would never do that. But there's nothing that prevents some four supervisor from initiating it because there's no land adjustment plan for the Palouse District. That's why these parcels are in this exchange. There's no land adjustment plan for the Palouse District. I would like to address the notion that... Could you wrap up soon, please? Say your pardon? Could you wrap up soon, please? Okay. I'd like to address the notion that uh, uh, these districts are problems. In Ms. Beaker's letter to the Daily News editor in late August or September, she had, and she did today as well, describe these parcels as small, isolated, and already surrounded by private lands that make it difficult for the Forest Service to responsibly manage. The Forest Service, the Palouse District, and the Clearwater National Forest for years have had cadastral surveyors, they've had land specialists, foresters, engineers. Most of these parcels are eroded, most of these parcels have property lines posted around them, and they have, do have legal access. Now she mentioned 40% do not have legal access, I think that's 40% of the number of parcels. It's certainly not 40% of the acreage. The acreage, I could point out which ones do and which ones don't. Most of them have uh, roads, access, property lines, and they have been responsibly managed. Do you have a comment? Actually, can I yes. address this part of that? The 40% was of the Clearwater County parcels, and um, I worked with the Forest Service uh, real estate person in, out of Orofino, and we've gone through and looked at all the legal access, the easements and everything, and list, which are listed in the, the EIS. Um, and that is of the parcels in Clearwater County that don't have legal uh, Many of those parcels in Clearwater County are on the Palouse District. Okay, but no. what I'm saying is 40% of the Clearwater County parcels okay. don't have okay. legal access. They may have roads to them, but the Forest Service does not have legal rights Again, to Again, I would suggest them. it's probably number of parcels, not acreage. Right. Yeah, right. okay. Because by far the majority of the acres are accessed legally. Do you have a comment? I was just going to say, Blake, did you say that the Palouse District did not have a line adjustment plan, or did you mean the Clearwater? 
there is an in-house working document which was used for, for, for directing, and it was misused for this exchange. Um, as a matter of fact, Tom Riley, the previous uh, forest supervisor, did not even acknowledge its existence because it was not in the forest plan. It was something uh, that a number of us Blues District employees developed to guide future activities <coughs> so that we wouldn't, as had been done in the past, be disposing of property that we acquired in some previous land exchange, or actually it was the opposite of that. We dispose, or we, we acquired some, reacquired some land that had been disposed of in a previous exchange. We wanted something that would identify the areas that we wanted to consolidate on the district and allow those areas outside of those to be used as the trading stock. What this exchange would do would be robbing all of the trading stock so that we have, and, and it, uh, as was pointed out in a previous slide, uh, a lot of the partials that are not in the exchange would be refragmented by chopping off partials adjacent to them. Some of those were identified as outside of uh, the consolidation areas, but not all of them. Are there comments, questions, or representing any, any other points of view? Yes, sir. I'm a person the owner and lays all down out in close to where some of this property is going to be exchanged. I use the national forest in that area for recreation. I camp on it, I fish on it, I hunt on it, I walk around on it. At over three dollars a gallon for gas, I would never go to the upper locks off. Why would I want to give up what I have here for something that I would never touch? And why would anybody else? We take uh, two more comments, questions. <clears throat> I have a question for, for Ms. Beaver. Um, Western Pacific Timber, uh, according to your slide, owns 150,000 acres between Idaho and Montana, or uh, Washington State. Um, and the acreage in Washington State was acquired in 2005, or a large portion of it, 82,000 acres that you traded, mm -hmm. and approximately 39,000, 40,000 acres in Idaho. That's 120,000 acres. Right. Um, actually, the 82, the property we acquired in 2005 from Boise Cascade wasn't just the 82,000 acres. Part of it was that block we have down in the Goldendale area. And with that exchange with the DNR, we filled in the holes that were DNR sections throughout that block. So we added to that ownership down there with the land exchange, as well as picked up scattered parcels throughout the state. So previous to 2005, how many, how many acres of timber did you manage? At Western Pacific? Yeah. Um, I wasn't here in 2005. I'm not sure what our ownership mm -hmm. was at that point. Uh, when did you start working for Western Pacific? In 08. Okay. Well, oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. not done. Okay. Okay. Uh, were you and your husband hired simultaneously? No. Um, I worked for Boise Cascade prior to the land or to the purchase of the lands by Western Pacific Timber, um, and then I worked for another company called American Forest Land Company out of Ellensburg, mm -hmm. and then I was hired by Western Pacific Timber in 08. When in 08? August of 08. I'm not sure of the exact date, but August. So, um, uh, you know, over the last two years, I think how many million board feet have been harvested? No, no, I think we're getting outside of the, the uh, area of discussion. Well, yeah. so, thank you. Thank you. Tom, last comment. Okay. Uh, I'd, I'd like to ask the speaker a question. Uh, Western Pacific Timber has represented themselves as a very responsible management company who uh, strongly supportive of the, the counties and the citizens in the areas that they're working. And yet one of the concerns I know voiced by many county commissioners in particular is the fact that uh, if you take a look at uh, at least 15 counties in Washington State where Western Pacific has uh, property from exchanges, also in Idaho County, uh, that Western Pacific timber 
uh, has been delinquent and paying their property taxes by a year. Now, that's not against the law. It's, it's strictly legal, and a few folks have finally caught up with it. But I wonder, many people would view a delinquency of a year and pay property taxes as having a harmful and negative financial impact on the various services that property taxes uh, are utilized in the counties uh, for uh, services that <coughs> citizens need. Um, well, as you know, uh, this has been tough economic times in the last couple of years, uh, especially for the timber industry. It's historically low log prices in the last couple of years, I think. Beginning of 09 or maybe it was 08 um, was the very bottom of the market. Uh, it's tough to make some money if you can't make some make money harvesting timber if that's your business. Um, so yes, we were behind on our taxes and we are now caught up and we paid the penalties and the interest and I mean it's unfortunate that it, that we had to go that route, but it's just kind of the way of economic times for us. Uh, no, I'm gonna have to stop you. It, uh, could you stay? Uh, okay, some people uh, Teresa may have to leave. She has a meeting in Potlatch. Uh, but uh, we'll formally end the meeting. And uh, we want to thank our guest speakers for addressing this interesting topic. And uh, 